Hello everyone. So in this demonstrational video we're going to go through how to um, properly do the mechanical setup of the Kiant IV2 um, controller as well as the sensor itself. So in this video we have a power supply right here and this is a Wiedmuller power supply as well as a stride um, 5 port ethernet switch and then obviously our Kiant controller right over here. Um, and then up here in the corner, and I'll try to adjust that slightly so that we can see it just a little better, is the actual vision sensor itself. Now that's not the position that we would need to have that vision sensor in, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and have that put there. Um, for starters, what we need to talk about a little bit is more of the controller itself and how it snaps on the DIN rail. So you would basically push up and then lift out if you need to take it off. There's these two little tabs on the back that are spring-loaded. So when putting it on the DIN rail, you would obviously go to the bottom, push up, and then slide in until it's firmly locked in place. On the front of the controller, you'll see that you have five different LEDs, um, power for and then air, so obviously that light should be green. Um, there'll be times where it might be red and then you have an air on your controller. You'll have your output, so that's going to flash whenever your output sent through. Um, trigger, obviously every time the camera's triggered it's going to flash. Status, it should be a green light generally. So that way we know that we've got a, a working function between our sensor head and our, our uh, controller itself. Um, and then link, obviously is going to be the ethernet connection. And then our ethernet port right here, which has this little plastic tab that slides into it when they send you from the manufacturer. You'll have a little SD light up here, as well as SD card port right here. Um, as you can see, this controller does not have an SD card in it, so um, we have really no concern to worry about that. Right here, this little connector, that's going to be the head connector. Um, and then you have an I.O. connection port right here, where your I.O. ribbon cable goes into. If for some reason you need to set the controller back to the original IP factory settings, you hit this little button in here with a little paper clip, push that in. When we go to power it up, the power connections are down here. You'll have 24 volts DC, um, which we're actually going to go ahead and do right now. These are little push type connectors, so I'm going to go ahead and just slide in our 0 volts DC, and then slide in our positive 24 connection as well. Okay. Go ahead and slap that back on the DIN rail here. Make sure it's connected tight. Okay, I'm going to make sure all my connections look correct. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug in our 24 volt DC power supply. Okay. So now we're powered up. And we'll see we have a green light on here telling us that our controller unit is powered up and is functioning properly. I'm going to go ahead and pull our Ethernet connection out. Um, unfortunately, in our demonstration here, we won't actually see our uh, Ethernet port light up because I do not have um, the Ethernet switch powered up. But for all intents and purposes we would go ahead and connect in our Ethernet cable as well. Along with that we would go ahead and take um, our umbilical cable which is going to go from the sensor head to the sensor unit over here. Understand they're both male ends on this connection on the umbilical cable. Um, they both have really tiny little micro pins so be very careful. There is a little uh, set um, notch right here that allows for the adjustment to um, to not bend the pin so that you, you only get the correct um, placement within the uh, connector itself. doesn't matter which side goes to the controller and which side goes to the uh, sensor head, they're both the same. So we're going to go ahead and connect that in there. I do want us to uh, acknowledge one real quick thing here. Our uh, power error light went red and that is because it's noticing that there is no connection between the controller unit and the sensor head itself. So we'll go ahead and connect that together and see if we can't get that to clear out. We may have to do a whole reboot on the system um, in order to get it to recognize that the sensor has now been reconnected. And we'll give that just a second to see what happens. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and connect our I.O. ribbon cable here, which is for our discrete I.O. Um, there is, it is directional, so you can only go one way, and then it's a snap fit, and then locks in place on these two little tabs on the ends here. Um, so, 
For all intents and purposes of our demonstration, we're still running into the error light, so I'm going to go ahead and do a manual hard reset and just cycle power on the unit to bring it out of that funk. Go ahead and reconnect the power now. We'll have to let it go through its little warm up configuration. Once again, you need to keep in mind where you're mounting this controller. Um, it does put off a certain amount of heat, so keep that in mind that the ambient temperature you need to um, uh, maybe produce a little bit of a room inside your cabinet, make sure it has a fan in there and blowing on this controller, keeping um, some of that, uh, um, that cooled down so that way you're not overheating and, and, cost, and possibly uh, ruining the life cycle of your controller itself. Okay, one other thing I want to show us too is, and we're going to go ahead and pull the little sensor out of here, is on top of the sensor, we actually have two different LED um, light bars, if you will. They're short little lights. These will flash red or green, um, depending on what um, you have uh, going on with your sensor or what your setup is. Um, obviously, red is either going to be an error or um, a no good image, a failed image, something along those lines. Um, if it's just kind of cycling a, a mild, slow green uh, that tends to um, produce the uh, understanding that uh, maybe the sensor is being programmed or not quite online, it's not in the run mode. Um, if it's solid green, flashes green, something along those lines, that could be uh, a good image, okay image, something along those lines as well. This will rotate as well. So you could mount the sensor like this, or you could mount it like that. There's a little stop on the one side so that it can only go so far. Um, on this side, obviously, we have four integrated LED lights that are for um, the flash of this vision sensor itself. Um, there are some little snap ends here where um, you can attach a polarized filter. You can attach um, two different styles of dome lights that Keyence makes for this particular sensor. So just things to keep in mind. Um, when working with this particular type of sensor system. That actually concludes this demonstrational video, so thank you all for watching.